A few days ago, the rugby union community farewelled one of its heroes, the hulking lock Daniel Vickerman, who played 63 tests for Australia. To the bewilderment and heartache of the country, Dan took his own life two weeks ago. His death highlights what Lifeline is calling a national emergency. Suicide rates in Australia are at 10-year highs, and young men are particularly overrepresented in the statistics. In Victoria, 25-year-old Jake Fitzsimmons was a local footy hero, had a decent job and plenty of great mates. But late last year, the depression he suffered also became too much to bear. As Peter Stefanovic reports, for the sake of all the Dan Vickermans and Jake Fitzsimmons, we must do more to help and support those who are vulnerable. When he was playing footy, he was playing for his team and he knew what he had to do, when he had to do it. For Melbourne mum, Debbie Fisher, the MCG holds treasured memories. This was his peak year of footy. Like, he absolutely kicked butt. It was here where Debbie proudly watched her firstborn son, Jake Fitzsimmons, or Fitzy, to his mates, live out his high school football dream. Two grand finals on the MCG. Doesn't get much better than that. But now, it's also the home of heartbreak. Somewhere during that tricky transition from high school footy hero to adulthood, Fitzy started to lose his way and spiralled into darkness. He made me picture sort of like a, a cyclone, I think, sort of, you know, raising up and then him just continually trying to push it down all the time. Three months ago, Fitzy took his own life. What did he say that made you scared for his life. He just said to me, he goes, I don't know how much longer I can fight it for, Mum. You know, and that's when I said to him, I said, you can do it. I said, whatever you need, you know, I'm here always, always, you know. That must have given you a hell of a fright, though, when he's describing oh, it. Oh, I, yeah. I, I just, I can't imagine how, I, yeah. I, no, I can't imagine how he would have Yeah, that was his first tattoo, so... Southern Cross. Yes. Aussie Pride. Aussie Pride. Proud Australian. Absolutely. Yeah, loved everything about it. So I loved cricket, the footy, the anything. Like, if Australia was in it, he was cheering for them. These are just plain... On the outside, the cheeky 25-year-old was kicking goals. What were his interests around here? Football. Mm -hmm. Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, can't yet, because he got his learners. But privately, Fitzy had been battling depression and anxiety for years, refusing to let his footy mates in on his illness. Mum and younger sister Rhiannon were the only ones who knew just how troubled he was. I knew for the last 12 months that it was serious. I knew, and I'd quite often say to him, you know, do you think you need to go to the doctors or something like that? And it'd be, no, you know, I'm, I'm OK. I think I can, you know, pull myself out. I'm just having a bad day. Must have been awful for his sister to see. Yeah, it was hard because I always grew up, like, he was all I had. He was my big macho protector, don't go near my sister, mad. Like, I, he was... I idolised him. If I had him, I didn't need anyone else. Um, and to see him crumble, yeah, it um, makes you crumble, that's for sure. Debbie took Fitzy to doctors and counsellors in a desperate effort to help her son, but he continued to slip away. The expert help didn't work. People tend to go, oh no, they'll be right. They're not. They're not. Like thousands of Australian parents, Debbie realised she was navigating a mental health care system that's failing to engage at-risk young men. We've got a real issue in Australia with cultures of uh, young men's mental health which are clearly aligned with their thoughts and identification around masculinity. Dr Simon Rice from Origin 
a leading youth mental health research group, agrees with Debbie that our mental health care system is broken for blokes. What has happened is that uh, mental illness and mental ill health has been aligned with weakness and vulnerability and a strong sense of shame. Shame is a really powerful emotion and it prevents people from talking uh, and it prevents people from seeking help. A series of setbacks triggered Fitzy's downfall, a broken relationship and an ankle injury that saw him hang up the boots for good. He began abusing drugs and alcohol and lying to his family and friends. He became angry and withdrawn. On the day that he died, he'd borrowed my car on the Sunday, so I went into his room, I grabbed my keys, I looked at him and I go, you are going to be in so much trouble because you haven't gone to work, you know. And um, I went off to, to work thinking, oh, well, he, he, he'd had a good weekend, you know, everything would have been fine. And then at one o'clock I got a text message. The message was his farewell note. I went straight home, went straight home, and that was it, my whole world just crumbled. Yeah, it's a vision I'll never forget, <laughs> never. The impact of Fitzy's death sent a great wave of grief through his tight-knit community in the foothills of the Dandenong Ranges in Melbourne. Best mates, Todd Morgan and Jacob O'Loughlin, are still coming to grips with how their friend became a suicide statistic. Do you remember the last thing he said to you? Yeah, got a message from him. It was, hey, mate, I'm not going to make it this week. I love you, Toddy. You've always been me, mate. That was the last thing I got from him. I sent back, mate, I love you too. God, you're an idiot. But I love you. And then that's all. That was the last thing I got from him. Suicide is the leading cause of premature death in Australia. The numbers are shocking. Every day, six men in this country take their own lives, and the men drastically outnumber the women. Three quarters of all Australians who suicide are male, and for those aged in their 20s, suicide makes up a third of all deaths. They're broken, they're tired, they're lost, they're, they're, they're trying to help themselves, but it's not working. It's not working. One young man who also understands the pain behind our country's high suicide rate is Jake Edwards. I think half the time when it comes to mental health and depression, we don't want people to fix it. We just need people to, to understand it. Let's see, just saw the train go over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. A proud country lad, 29-year-old Jake, was drafted into the AFL straight out of high school. Edwards, steady as she goes, does an extra kick and make a huge difference. And his future looked set. And he gets help from Edwards to kick the goal. Jake Edwards gets Calvin second. But, like Fitzy, his life came crumbling down during his early 20s, and by age 26, he too tried to take his own life. I am going to cry now. <laughs> cry? You're going to make anybody cry. Yeah, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh. Now he's committed to helping those most affected by suicide. And he's found a new teammate. Wow. I'm sure you're gonna have a massive impact. We're gonna change the world. We are. <laughs> we start one, one community at a time. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like Debbie, Jake Edwards is also sick of the stigma surrounding suicide and men's mental health. A lot of people may look at me externally and say, I've got it all together and it's all set up and it's perfectly structured, but it's never been that way. Oh, trust me, behind closed doors, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a constant battle. He tells his harrowing story of suicide survival and beating depression, hoping it'll break through to the young men who right now are falling through the cracks in the healthcare system. Do you think Jake could have saved Fitzy's life? Yes, I think so. Because he could have connected? Absolutely. Yep. Footy, footy player to footy player. Instead of? A white suit. 
What was the point where you felt like you had no other option but to end it? Yeah, so there's a point in my life um, where it all just kind of snowballed into, into a two month period. I had a, a partner of mine at the time who, who'd walked out of my life. Financially, I was struggling quite a lot. I just made a decision when she walked out. I said, well, this thing you call life, I just, I suck at it. And I'm, I'm failing. My, my family's consistently worried about me. My mates, I can't be honest to them. Um, so that's it, I'm done. And I remember consciously thinking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and take my own life. And in my mind, it was very much an all or nothing um, attack. I wasn't thinking about the pain and anguish I would have caused on my family and my friends. Depression scared the shit out of me. Mental health was the scariest thing that I could ever imagine. Using his own experiences, uh, so Jake is now shaking up how life. mental health Everyone services are offered issue. in the community. So my role in setting up this organisation is to relate to you guys, to build the rapport and to help you get to where you need to get. Jake's program, called Outside the Locker Room, was rolled out here at the Bond Beach Football Club in Melbourne's southeast. It's had a huge impact amongst the young players. How are you feeling? Nervous. Debbie and Jake, a suicide survivor and a grieving mum, now tell their stories together. What, you know, I hope that he would have said or done was made one more phone call that day, and that was to me, instead of leaving it. And that's the other thing, call your mums. Your mums will never, ever let you down. Never. Never. Do you feel like this is what you're supposed to be doing? Every single day. Think about what I'm doing today, and then I realise, you know what, Jake? AFL football, mate. It's nothing. I have the opportunity now as second chance in life, and, and I mean that. And I don't take that for granted. Nothing's ever, ever going to be the same again. I'm never going to be the same again. I'm going to be a different person, but I'm going to hope that it's going to be a better person and that I'm going to make a difference. I, I would hate to think that he, he died and it was just a waste because he was so much more than that, so much more. If, after watching this story, you need to speak with someone, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.